Hi everyone, I thought I'd do a little follow up video here on the EDC 501J, the programmable DC voltage standard that I modified in my last video. Um, I've been working on the software quite a bit, I've kind of got it finished now, I'm not going to do any more uh, famous last words. Um, it's basically, it's, it's, it's now customised exactly how I would like to use the, the unit going forward in the workshop. So I thought I'd run through the, the functionality here. Um, I've added some extra things that weren't in the last video and uh, I've also got the THD2015 hooked up so we can sort of see the accuracy that we've got here now. I haven't calibrated it yet. It's, I've been tweaking the pots inside of it a little bit but um, I haven't really gotten down to it and got it, got it nailed yet. Um, one of the reasons for that is, is I'm actually um, you know, I haven't really looked to see how accurate the, 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 the multimeter is, a six and a half digit multimeter. I do actually have another 2015 THD up in the workbench, but I haven't actually compared it directly to this one. I'll be happy enough if I get them both to match the output from the, T, the, the EDC 501J and then I'll start tweaking the pots in anger. Um, so let's have a look at the functionality and see what we've got. Okay, so what we've got is the six switches there, basically the up-down control for each one of the six digits on the display there. Um, that's as per the last video. Uh, they've got a zero button as well here, which will basically zero the output, zero the display. Um, and what I have added from the last video is this millivolt volt push button here and uh, an associated pot. Basically what the millivolt volt push button will do, it will put the EDC 501J in its millivolt mode. Uh, as you can see at the moment I've got it set in, in its voltage mode, so basically uh, 5.000000 volts DC and there we are, we're getting 4.99999 uh, seven or eight volts on the on the display there, which is about blah, 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 maybe 30 microvolts uh, out at the moment. Okay, so if I push the uh, millivolt volt push button, this is a a momentary push button, and it'll basically it'll cycle the display round four different modes that I've got this the software configured for. So mode one is going to give me the voltage output from the push buttons. And if I hit the push the push button here, it'll now we're in millivolt mode, and you can see the decimal point shifted there, and that's again reading from the up down switches there. So you know obviously I can go and press the push button here, and you'll see the display change in there for the most significant digit there. And of course the output as soon as you go into millivolt mode, the output will configure accordingly, and you can see up here on the Keithley uh, meter, it's basically 50.0028 millivolts. Uh, on the display there, which is about 2.5 microvolts uh, out from where it should be, which isn't too bad really. And the next press of the push button is going to change it now. And you can see I've brought the, the, the display down on the second line here. It's basically two of the modes use the top line and the other two modes use the bottom line. And the reason I did that is just to differentiate a little bit more the difference between the modes that I'm in because I'm in a, a, a completely different mode now. Um, and what we've got now is this pot here now has control over the output. The push buttons are no, no longer being read now. Um, however, the, the pot is not in direct control of the analog output from the 501J. The pot is basically replacing the push buttons so in other words, the pot is still routed through the Arduino inside the unit and the Arduino is still in digital control of the 501J. So at the moment, again, I've got to, the pots there, you can vary up and down there. So if I set it to 5.22 volts, you'll see up on here 5.219999. Well, it's near as damn it, 5.2. And you can see as I rotate the pot there, I'm only... Uh, varying the obviously the most significant and then two decimal places that's just because the uh, Arduino is only a 10-bit input 10-bit analog input which I'm reading from the pot the other thing is the sl you wouldn't want to really control those least significant digits from the pot you'd never have any control over it because the slightest touch of the pot would send the the, the, the readings up or way up and way down at the moment even just the slightest uh, 
touch of the pot is enough just to change that uh, uh, digit there, the second decimal point position there. So again, dial up any voltage there, 5.34, you are actually sending 5.34000 to the 501J via the Arduino and as you can see they are 5.339999 so it ain't too bad so in one respect yes you do have a simple pot control but on the other hand you still have the accuracy of the EDC 501J being controlled and the readout in the, on the display is, is what is being sent on the out, to the output of the 501J right down across those uh, five decimal places there. So I can wind it all the way up to 10 volts. There we go. I've got the pot configured to give it a 0 to 10 volts as you do there. So there we go, 10.00002, which uh, is about 20 microvolts there. And then obviously right down as well, I've got to just wind her back down to 1 volt here, for instance. There we go, one volt. So that's the, the pot mode in for VDC volts out. The next mode and the fourth mode is basically the same again, but the millivolt output being controlled over via the pots. It's a similar thing. So again, you can see the decimal point shifted along. So now we're looking at millivolt output. So 3.7 millivolts on the output. And there we go, 3.7000. Again, we only have control over um, one decimal place. The other three there are fixed there, but those three are being sent to the 501J via the Arduino. So you've basically got control from zero millivolts all the way up to 100 millivolts, as is the spec of the, the 501J. So there we go, 100.000. And then if you wind her down a bit and then you hit the button again and then you're back to the original mode uh, the, the mode number one obviously it jumps to the top row there and we've got 7.76 uh, volts output via the push buttons here and that's it on the output there um, one thing that kind of came across by accident and I've kind of it's a quirk in the way it works but I've actually left it in because I think it's actually quite good if I go back to uh, pot mode and wind the pot to 6.3 volts there, so there you go, 6.3 on the display there, and then you cycle back round to the push button mode, it inherits the uh, setting from the pot mode into the push button mode, so it's not like it'll jump to zero, I could have made it so the software, when you change modes, it sets the output to zero, so that you're starting from scratch, but I thought it was quite a good idea to have it inherit the pot value effectively onto the push buttons there and that's what you're getting there and it's a similar thing when you go if I go back to mode 2 uh, obviously the same thing will happen there 63 millivolts and then obviously you're back reading the pot again so you're basically you're not really zeroing it at any time uh, unless you press the I mean, normal mode for the push buttons I press the zero there and uh, it'll zero the output but again if I cycle back to the pots again it will read the pot because I haven't touched the pot it will be back at 6.3 volts again so all in all I think I've got the best of both worlds here I've got an accurate programmable DC voltage standard but I've also got the flexibility of just using it like a uh, you know a 0 to 10 volts uh, output from a potentiometer basically I can stick it in, in pot mode and I've hooked this up to any test equipment I've got and I can basically wind the value up and down so I think that's actually quite good I'm, like I said, I'm quite often using my handheld voltage source for all sorts of things, but it just means that I've got the flexibility of having the pot there, a quick tweak up or down, and uh, you know I'm getting output from the voltage standard. And with the addition of it's going to be highly accurate. So there you go. That's just a little uh, update on the 501J. As you can see, it's up here in the workbench uh, now. It's all permanently installed. So I hope to make some good use of it soon. Thanks for watching.